Hi, I'm Steve Elwood, RNS Transport. I'm standing next to Brad Tran. Uh, he contacted me a few mo couple of days ago about holding a public forum for what's called Disaster for Disabilities. We're trying to get people here to, uh, into this building. We want to see who's going to come, what they have to say about the potential government shutdown. Well, thank you, and I'm really glad so many people are here tonight to be given the short notice. It's going to become even more clear that the government shutdown isn't just about public employees. It's about, it has a huge impact on private, local private businesses and public, the public and private sector, in addition to the effect it's going to have on all the families um, that we're going to hear about, I'm, sh I'm sure, tonight. So I hope to come here and find out a little bit more about who is being affected um, in the private sector in my community, besides just you know, who we know, which is the public employee sector. The case uh, that gets us here tonight is uh, uh, there was not agreement and there's nine or ten bills uh, that are not agreed upon, not signed. You know, I'm here, I'm happy to answer questions to the best of my ability, but I really want to hear from folks about how this is impacting your jobs, your business, you know, your families, uh, so that we can have a, a kind of a something to carry with us to go up and say we can't, you know, we need to negotiate and here's why. We'll have those personal stories from home which are always really helpful. One of the best kept secrets going on right now is the Autism Center is not getting paid for services they're rendering. RNS Transport is not getting paid. Pharmacists are not getting paid. Chiropractors are not getting paid. So we are in day 16 of our shutdown. And on July 1st, if the shutdown happens, we'll be on day 31. And um, we're barely hanging on right now. Is this a good time to open it up to the floor? Okay. Uh, we work with children with autism, provide individual skills training. Uh, there's two issue, main issues we have going on. The government shutdown in July would, would af effectively end our ability to provide services. And we're also running against uh, funding has been delayed in June, so we're actually on you know, uh, 15 to 16 days into not getting paid for services has a huge impact on our staff, that's 50 to 60 staff, has a huge impact on the children we serve, 60 and plus families that won't be able to receive services. Our kids, I mean you're talking about trying to keep these kids to at least be able to function. And my son has a mild autism, so I'm very thankful for that, but none of the kids will actually be able to continue on those services that are vital for them to in school, in the regular classroom, um, and just be able to be kids that are getting the help that they need. We also rely, our residents rely, on RNS Transport, if any of you know, to go to their appointments. So this is, this is a situation we all the caregivers realize there will be actual harm. It's not that there might be, there will be. If you have a home health aid, uh, home health aid client who is used to getting a med set up every other week and doesn't get that med set up, there will be actual harm. I, this is really bad. I, I've been, I've been in this uh, in the healthcare business for my first job in mowing the lawn. That's how long I've been doing it. I have never seen anything like this, and, and this is a real train wreck. And, and we will, if it comes to pass, we will be hearing stories about someone who just didn't quite make it. Uh, all the cuts and different things that's going on, it's going to affect our, our um, trans transportation with our nest transport for uh, medical rides and getting, getting to our, our appointments. And I don't think that is right, because I need to keep independent as possible so I don't end up in, in the nursing home or somewhere where I don't want to be. One of the major concerns that we have is that we do high-tech skilled, private duty extended hours of services. And when I'm referring to high-tech skilled services, we're talking about individuals who are needing services, specifically who are on ventilators, skilled nursing, 24-hour skilled nursing, physical therapy, occupational therapy, we're also indicating where we do infusion therapy within the home. And we are majorly concerned about all of this funding being actually eliminated effective July 1st. At this point, our contingency plans, when we were providing 24-hour services, were to actually transfer individuals into nursing homes. 
As nursing homes are not going to be accepting clients, we have no alternatives but if ch conditions change that these individuals will be forced to go to the emergency rooms where the delivery of care and the cost is going to be significantly higher. I'm concerned whether the ERs will be able to handle the volume of individuals that may need to be referred to effective July 1st. If nursing homes are not going to be admitting them because they're not after July 1st, where are these patients going to be going? Hospital. Hospitals, exactly. So where the cost will then therefore increase into the ERs into or serious issues that are going to occur in the homes. What's going to happen to all of these individuals? I do agree with Pat that, that we have an obligation, an obligation to meet the needs of this community. We serve a very, very vulnerable population here in the community. And I do expect legislators to come to negotiation and come up with a solution because we will shut down. There will be people who are going to die in Olmsted County with government shutdowns because services that are life-sustaining and life-supporting will not be delivered. Um, we also know that there's going to be ripple effects from um, child care assistance not being able to be provided for workers who are going to have to stay home who can't deliver services for organizations. Um, there's also going to be businesses that are going to um, close and never reopen and services that will never be offered again with this government shutdown. And, you know, what frustrates the hell out of me is the fact that these two parties, and they all said they're going to work with us and do everything together, they don't. And I'm not blaming these two because I know where these two sit. What, what can you do? What can we do? What honestly can we do? This company is going to go out of business and how many people are going to be unemployed? We're talking about thousands of individuals that will be affected if the shutdown goes into effect. We, as the company in terms of for Comfort Home Healthcare, we're talking to over 400 employees that would be also impacted. If you add all the individuals or different companies from United Way, from other smaller companies, we're going to be going into numbers of thousands who will be unemployed. But for those who are nursing homes and hospitals, if it comes down to the government shutting down, it could turn into family quitting their jobs in order to help support and to provide those services for other families, which will then even further the line of how this is going to affect other people and jobs. And I know I speak for, for Kim as well. Thank you to Brad and to Scott and anyone else that uh, had anything to do with uh, putting the chairs up, the tables up. I don't know, but uh, somebody made this happen and I, probably more than one. And thank you very much. Uh, the question was posed that if, if caregivers out of the community weren't able to provide those services, then those residents would possibly go to nursing homes. And I responded that that we would also be involved in the shutdown, so we wouldn't be able to admit people. So I'm not sure where the residents would go to. And that we need to reestablish the social compact that we once had, not only in this state, but in this nation. I stress to all the legislators for a bipartisan agreement to come to some type of agreement and negotiated resolution to actually meet the needs of this community. In worst case scenario, if we don't get funded by July 1st, or get something in the works at least, there will be something akin to Hurricane Katrina relief having to take place in the state of Minnesota with tent cities and people not being able to, you know, effectively take care of themselves. There will be deaths because people will be neglected because they don't know how to take care of themselves in certain cases or they won't be able to effectively do so. Hi, my name is Brad Tran with RT Autism Awareness Foundation. Minnesotans, you just witnessed it. A government shutdown would affect uh, our disability community in ways that you could never imagine. To even think about losing a single life due to the shutdown is simply unacceptable. unacceptable. It's time right now that our Minnesota legislators, our elected leaders who are elected to go do a job, get the job, job done to take care of these individuals and take care of the businesses and uh, agencies that are there to support them. You heard the cries for help tonight. Now it's time to get it done. Thanks for taking part, and we hope the, the message is received loud and clear.